classic mode it means it's hard, but not as abusive as it can be. Iron Man means I can't reload my saves and must live with my mistakes. It's going to be a good time. Since I've never done it before, this base is going in Asia. XCOM is a squad tactics game in which you are short on resources, short on time, and severely outnumbered and outgunned. It's stupendously fun, and you really want to buy it. Uh, they're repairing this roof. Are we sure it can support the weight of this plane? Shut up! Okay. The point of entry for this roof is a rough one, because all of the cover initially available to me is half cover and flimsy. These material pallets will basically evaporate under alien plasma fire, so a protracted firefight this early in the map would be really bad. I advance cautiously and slowly, hoping the aliens will tip me off at their location, so that I can make a mad dash for sensible cover that doesn't put me right in the line of fire. I'm overwatching my second rank of rookies out of cover because there are no active aliens. When aliens activate, they only get a half turn, basically, at just one move that they use to get to cover. They won't fire, they won't overwatch, meaning that my rookies get a chance to overwatch on them while they're out of cover. It's basically a free shot on any aliens that patrol into my view. I can then get my rookies to cover on the next turn. In retrospect, I probably should have pushed Bakani all the way forward to the large construction storage crate. Open fire. But hindsight's 2020. Well, we've made some new friends. This is not ideal, of course, because, again, the cover in this area is really shoddy. Bakani, with only one move left, needs to use it to get herself to some reasonable cover, while the rest of the team makes the best of the cover they have. Marquez shifts to cover the left flank and take advantage of the heavy cover there, while Davies and Erickson hunker themselves down and hope for the best. Let's get them! You might think the sectoids are being crazy here, and they kind of are, but by pushing that far forward that quickly, they're putting me in a very difficult place. If I don't kill them fast, I am trapped behind this really flimsy cover, and they're going to get really easy flank shots on Bakani and Davies. It does put them out of cover for a full turn. 92%. You're totally going to die. What? There's green alien blood spurting from his face. Bullet immunity is a problem. If I don't kill him, he will step forward and flank Bakani. 70%, what do you say, Davies? That's what I like to see. Their weapons appear to self-destruct when the operator dies. We should look closely for any fragments that could be salvaged for our own... Marquez cleans up, and Erickson steps to the right to cover Davies. The remaining sectoid must have used a double move to get to that spot, because he doesn't overwatch and doesn't fire. I need to take advantage of his idleness, so I push the team forward on the left, keeping in mind that I might run into another patrol as I do so. His compatriot's dead. This lone sectoid doesn't know what to do. So he tries to blend into the background while my troops move to flank him. If I don't move, they won't see me. All right, Mr. Creeper. Speaking of creeping, if I creep up to the very edge of this case, I won't trigger his overwatch, and I get a nice, easy shot on him. He's down. With the last of that trio down, I take the opportunity for my troops to reload and reorient to approach the other side of the map. 
note that as I advance Erickson, I don't move him to the right there. I don't want to unveil all of that fog just yet. I want my other troops to be in a position to support him when he invariably runs into more little friends. This is a great place for montage music, but any song I can think of would get me sued, so... Those are the little sound waves I wanted to see when I first started the map, letting me know about the direction I can expect to find aliens in. In cases like this, it won't affect how I move too much, because the map is so small. However, in other maps, it's fundamental in keeping my squad alive. There's something out there. Despite the death screams of their former friends, these sectoids seem surprised to see me. I'm in good cover, but I don't have any good shots, and when push comes to shove, the aliens are going to win the long-term firefight. They've got better guns and better aim, and even though my cover's good, they will chew through it eventually, and they might hit me on a lucky shot, which is not something I can say for with my rookies. So, it's grenade time. Grenade out. Lord, may I want to instruct your men to exercise restraint when using explosives. While certainly effective at killing aliens, they also destroy the artifacts we're hoping to recover from the bodies. Just something to consider. She's right. Using grenades is costly because it destroys weapon fragments. I still get the corpses but not getting weapon fragments will hurt me in the long term. I need those for weapons research, development, and building a lot of stuff. Then added a bonus in this case, Davies killed two aliens and got himself a promotion. A promotion he pays for by taking plasma to the face through a porta potty. He doesn't panic, giving me one less thing to worry about and an opportunity to show off the better use case for a grenade, clearing cover. I position the grenade carefully so I get the front wall and the stack of cinder blocks he's hiding behind. That gives Erickson an easy shot. I'm about to start Good work out there, Strike One. If I may, Commander, the labs are on high alert. Teams are standing by for your orders. We can begin researching the newly recovered artifacts immediately. Well, that was a nice softball of an opener. One wounded, no dead, and all of my soldiers got promotions. Well, except for Bakani. Dr. Vallon was pretty concerned with weapon fragments, so I'm going to allow her to examine the ones I brought home, while engineering will be tasked with making me more satellite uplinks. For that purpose, the steam vent is looking really appealing. You need satellites in XCOM. They bring in money, reduce panic when you launch them. They're basically the lifeblood of your entire operation. So the sooner you get those going, the better. Remember, satellites. If you have any questions about tactical decisions I made, or maybe you caught a mistake that I didn't, please feel free to share in the comments. Join me next time as I take this show to Tijuana, when the game is not quite as nice to me as it was this time. Until then, you should seriously play some XCOM.